Greetings collectors and welcome to episode 4 of this special 6 part mini series of Clock Tower. So far we've covered the chronological releases, pricing, Clock Tower, The First Fear, Clock Tower 2 and The Door of Fear. If you've missed any of the series so far, I recommend going back to watch it first. Don't worry, I'll wait here for you. In this episode we're taking a look at Clock Tower Ghost Head, also known as Clock Tower The Struggle Within in the US. It was 1998 and Human Entertainment decided it was time to shake up the series. Jennifer's plotline now seemingly abandoned, the game now picks up the story of a 17 year old high school girl called Alyssa. The plot is set up by explaining that Alyssa's soul originally had a different personality residing in it, called Mr Bates. After therapy, Alyssa begins to remember her association with Mr Bates through her mysterious amulet. As Alyssa arrives at her father's friend Philip Tate's house in a small town of Salinas, it becomes clear that there is some sort of curse relating to the character called Maxwell. Upon trying to destroy the curse, Alyssa loses consciousness and awakes in a hospital. All is not well however, as she meets a rather monstrous cast. Before long she is stalked by a man with a hatchet and wearing an Oni devil mask named George Maxwell. From there, the plot goes even stranger with tales of cursed twins and revenge. As you might expect, this is a radical departure from the happenings in Norway. The common thread though is the gameplay. It's the same point and click method and mechanics of light puzzle solving combined with evading an ever looming stalker. Initially you find yourself walking around a large house making all kinds of gruesome discoveries. It is straight into the action in contrast with the previous game. What's that? <laughs> There's some interesting subtleties to the game as you activate the amulet. Certain puzzles and places can only be accessed by using this mechanic. This provides that extra level of gameplay missing from some of the other titles in the series. The voice acting is obviously intended to be creepy, but comes off as a little comedic at times. For a series that is quite confusing to track, there's what must have been a very confusing moment for US audiences, as Alyssa looks at a poster that has Japanese artwork. This isn't a game! It's all a rich tapestry though, so interesting to see the Japanese western crossover quirks. Moments of the game aren't exactly what I'd call scary, but there are at least moments that are genuinely creepy. Moments where you're being pursued by the young girl can get quite tense. As with much horror, it can come off as slightly cliche, but the execution is really solid, so I did have a positive experience whilst playing. So how does it play? Well I have to say straight out that I'm not a huge fan of this game. Having enjoyed the character development of Jennifer and Bobby in the first entries, this segue into Alyssa's story just doesn't really fit. For that reason it's almost best to see this game as a spin-off rather than a numerical sequel, just in case this series wasn't complicated enough. 
In the US, the game was released as Clock Tower 2 Struggle Within. I can't help thinking that marketed as a direct sequel to the first 3D Clock Tower, this wouldn't tie together very well as a series. In some respects, I'm not too disappointed that the UK didn't receive a release of this game. Of all of the entries in the Clock Tower series, this game just sticks out as awkward and confusing. Most of the gameplay mechanics are the same as before, it just lacks that continuity with the other entries in the series. It's certainly not as bad as some online reviewers suggest, it just doesn't do anything different or contribute anything new to the series. It does act as a nice time filler though, and if you are into your horror games, it's an overall enjoyable experience. In terms of packaging, for the Japanese edition, the front cover is acceptable along with an engaging back cover. Inside expect a spine card, promotional material, CD and of course the game manual. The manual also departs from the style of the previous entries in the series. It's much more dark and storyboard driven. Overall though, a nice package. To collect this Japanese edition, look to pay around £10 or $15 in the US. For the US release, The Struggle Within, expect to pay closer to the $80 mark, although this is a title that seems to be gaining in price despite its rather mixed reviews. For around $15, Ghosthead is well worth collecting. For the US edition Struggle Within, well, it's going to be exactly that. Parting with $80 for a distinctly average game will certainly be a struggle for all but the core fanbase. Personally, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to add this one to my collection. I really couldn't defend it as an essential title though, had I not been a collector of the rest of the series. This was the last PS1 outing for the Clock Tower series. It was also the last game in the series that Human Entertainment would make. After a four year break, the Clock Tower rights had moved to Capcom and the next release would be on the next generation of console, the PS2. It would also be the first time that Japan, United Kingdom and the United States would receive a chronologically similar title release. The PS2 had landed and so had the long anticipated Clock Tower 3. Join me next time as I open up Sony's black box to witness the rebirth of the Clock Tower series. Oh! But Catherine, run! Hurry, run! Oh, don't come out!